Okay, so um, we uh, this is starting basically um, our three-part midterm review. All right, so part one today, we're trying to cover numbers one through 15. Um, focusing on the even questions, and then um, we'll see if we have time left to explore some of the odds. Um, and again, this is our midterm review, okay? All right, so, sorry, wrong button. All right, so number two, uh, it says 4 times 6x minus 5 minus 6x equals negative 2. Okay, so what's the first thing I'm going to do, guys? What's the first thing I'm going to do on number 2? All right, obviously my goal is to solve for what? I want to solve for what? Solve for x. Solve for my variable. What does my variable need to equal to make both sides of the equation true? Okay, so 4 times 6x is 24x. Because I can't subtract what's in parentheses, I must distribute. Now, if I, <coughs> if I multiply the first term, I also need to multiply the second term. What's 4 times negative 5? Negative 20. Now I bring down the rest of my equation. E equals negative 2. A lot of you did a really good job on this part. Okay. Now, before I can start solving for x, I must ask myself, because there are three terms on the left side, is there anything that I can combine or simplify before I start moving my terms? Yeah. What can I combine? Negative 26. Negative 20. Negative 6 is negative 26. All right? Now I can start solving. Just as a reminder, I must move what is not connected to the variable first. And opposite operations is critical for this section. So how would I get rid of negative 26? How do I get rid of that? How do I get rid of that, guys? Add 26 to both sides. Negative 2 plus 26 is positive 24. So x equals 1. Okay? x equals 1 on number 2. All right. Number 4. Okay? Number 4 at first glance looks pretty simple, right? Right? Oh, here's my x. Okay? However, I have a variable on both sides of my equation. It's actually not a big deal, okay? But it does cause us to think, well, what do I do? Because I actually need my variable on one side of the equation. So I have, I have two options here. I can subtract x to the other side, subtract x from 3x, or I could su subtract 3x and bring the 3x over to the left side, okay? Well, what do you think we should do? And we've already kind of talked about this. What do you think we should do, Sam? Um, I want to subtract x. Now, why did I put a 1 there? There wasn't a 1 in the original problem. Because it's, it's understood, and if you don't put it, you very well could forget that it's there and subtract wrong. Okay? So subtract 1x. And here's why I do that. Because now my x's are on one side and my numbers are on the other side. If I were to have subtracted 3x, I would have brought everything to the same side of the equation. That's not getting me anywhere, okay? So now, what is left on the left side of my equation? Just 6, right? Just 6. What's 3 minus 1 on the right side of the equation? What's 3 minus 1? 2. And now, what do I do simply to solve for x? Divide by 2, okay? and x equals 3. So you've got to understand, though, what do you do when there's variables on both sides? And that's why this problem's on there. All right, number 6. All right, number 6, the biggest challenge with number 6 is what am I looking for specifically in my answer, okay? So this whole one solution idea, um, I think, kind of messes with your head, right? You're like, one solution? What does that mean, one solution? Exactly what you found on numbers 2 and 4. There was an answer. Would you agree on two and four? There was an answer. That's one solution. No solution, an infinite solution, comes into play when my variables completely cancel out. So here's the catch for this part on your, t on your test. There actually might be an answer, just like there was in the first section. Or there may might not be. I'm not going to know until I start unpacking the problem. What do I mean by unpacking it? Do the distributive property. So it kind of 
So now it can actually show what my true values are. What's six times five? What's six times five, guys? 30. What's six times negative two? Negative 12V. Equals negative 12V minus four. Who got to that step? Did anybody get to that step? Okay, that's good. That's great. So now, what did I just tell you about number four? What do I need to do with my variables? I need them on both sides of the equation. Is that what I said? I need my variables where? On one side. Doesn't matter which side. It does not matter which side. So because I see negative 12V actually on both sides, I need to move one to the other side. It does not matter. So how could I move negative 12V to the other side of the equation? What could I do? What can I do to move negative 12V? Add it. It's the opposite operation. When I add 12V, it cancels out. Whatever I do to one side, I do to the other. And what I would expect is to get some value, but now actually what happens when I add 12V to the other side? What happens? cancels out zero so because my variables completely cancel I know now right now I know my answer is either no solution or infinite solution what is left will tell me which one it is what's left on the left side of my equation what's left what number is left guys 30 I had to circle it 30 equals what value is left on the right side of my equation? Negative 4. Is it true that those values equal each other? No. no. So my answer is no solution. If the numbers did equal each other, it would be infinite solution. Okay? But because the values that were left don't, I know that it's no solution. All right? So as soon as my variables cancel out, and guys, this is true for systems too. Okay, as soon as my variables cancel out, I know it's either no solution or infinite. All right, we'll talk about systems in a little bit. Um, actually, not in a little bit today, but we'll talk about them in a, in a later section of the review. All right, number eight, translations, rotations, all that fun stuff. Okay, all right, so on number eight, what does it say about the translation? All right, hopefully you have this done. Okay, I'm going five units left and three units up. Okay, so um, here's the kicker here. You have to know which value goes left and right and which value goes up and down. If you don't know that, there's no way you can do the correct operation to get to your new ordered pair. Okay, so which value x or y goes left and right which value x. x x is which number in the ordered pair the first one or the second one the first one so if i'm going five units left guys would that mean that i'm subtracting five from my x value or adding five if i'm going left i am subtracting think of your ordered pair and i'm going to give you a rough sketch of one um uh, of a coordinate plane on your order pair, let's say I have negative 5 over here, okay? That's where this point is supposed to be plotted, okay? If I'm going left, that means that I'm going farther into the negative, okay? That means I'm subtracting 5. So if you see the word left, you know that you're subtracting that value from the x value, okay? So let's go back to our ordered pairs. If I subtract 5 from negative 5, what do I get? I'm subtracting 5, so negative 5 minus 5, I'm taking away 5 more, negative 10. Okay, I'm moving farther into the negative. Farther left, it's going to be negative 10. Okay, so if I'm going 3 units up on y, am I adding 3 to my y value or subtracting 3 from my y value? What do you think? I'm adding. Okay, so what's negative 6 plus 3? Negative three. All right, go ahead and fill in B and C. Um, Aaliyah, what did you write for uh, point B, for the new ordered pair for point B? Eight, 
you know, for point B. It was three, four. So on my three for my X value, if I go five units left, that means I'm subtracting five from three. So what's three minus five? Yeah, negative two. Okay, so again, from each X value, I need to move five units left. That means I'm subtracting five from my X value, okay? Do you see that? So what if it said five units right? What would I have done to my X? I would have added five, okay? So if I'm going left, that means I subtract by whatever that value is. If I'm going right, that means I add. All right, so what about four? What am I doing with my four, my Y value? If it says three units up, Caleb, you're adding three. You're adding three. Four plus three is seven. Okay. So Faith, what do you think about C? What would your new C value be? She said one. How'd she get one for X? It was six. How'd she get one, Nolan? She subtracted five. How did she know that? Because I'm going five units left, so I subtract five. Are you catching on to that? When we did this part of the test, this is where a lot of people struggled, okay? So if you missed it the first time around, this part might take some extra focus for you guys to study this and see um, how to solve this part of it, all right? So it, it is 111, all right? Okay, number 10. Rotation. Now, the letters on your review sheet for 9 and 10 do not match up. That's okay, all right? I do apologize for that, but just kind of make your own, all right? So make a match up. Cross out the A, B, and C, and rewrite them F, G, H, and then add a J, okay? So here's what it tells me on number 10, and I will give you the key on your midterm. It says X, Y. Remember, the first order pair just means whatever it is in the original. That's your X, Y value. The second ordered pair tells you what to do to the ordered pair in order to rotate it. And in this case, it's 90 degrees counterclockwise. So it says negative Y, X. What does that mean? Negative Y, X. What does that mean that I'm doing to my ordered pairs? Okay. So my X, Y, now I'm going to flip them. Are you listening? I'm going to flip them. And what happens to my signs? What happens to my signs? Change the Y sign. What does that mean? Do I just automatically make sure that Y is negative? So if it was negative in the first one, then it's fine. No. It means that I flip them, and whatever my Y value was in the original ordered pair... I'm now going to do the opposite. That's what this negative is telling me. It means to flip them, and whatever my sign of Y was in the original order pair, now it's the opposite. So if it was negative, now it's positive, and vice versa. Okay? So the first one is always the hardest one. All right? Because if you get the first one right, the odds are that you're going to get the rest of them right. So if F is negative 2, negative 3, all right, write it down on your papers. Again, if I just give it to you without giving you time to think about the answer for yourself, we're losing opportunity to, um, you know, to kind of let you think first, all right? So what do you think? What do you think the answer is going to be for F? What's going to be the order pair? Nolan? Three, Not 3, 2. You're close. All right, so because I'm flipping X and Y, and it says to do the opposite of Y, 3 does need to be positive. But what happens to my X, Milani? The X stays the same, okay? It only says to do the opposite of Y. It does not say to do the opposite of X. X would have been negative there in the key. All right, so what is G? What is G? Again, the first one's the hardest. Once I can see the pattern for the first one, then I should be good for the rest of them, Chloe. Um, yes, correct, negative three, two. What about H? What about H, Bailey? Negative three, negative four. Okay, and J, Jeremiah? 
negative 4 fourths. Okay? All right, so that's number 10. Here's 12. All right, so on number 12, what shape do I have on number 12? We have a triangle. So we cannot solve this unless we know what the sum of the angle measures of a triangle are. What is it? 180. 180. So now that you know it's 180, you can set up your equation. You know that the three angles of the triangle will add up to 180. So if you know two of them, then you can solve for the third one. If you haven't already, go ahead and finish that. And then solve for y also. Okay, what's 45 plus 55? 100 plus x equals 180. Subtract 100, x equals 80. There's two ways that you can find y. Can anybody tell me one of the ways? Anybody tell me one of the ways? Two ways that you can find y. <clears throat> uh, Jakari, you know that x is 80. Y is right on the outside. How can I find y? How can I find y, Sam? Okay, so the easiest way is to add the two interior angles that are not connected. 45 plus 55 is 100. What's the second way that I could have done it? Did anybody, does anybody remember the second way, Faith? You're, sub you're, you're close, but you subtract. So if you know that X is 180, they're on a straight line, which is 100, or I'm sorry, you know X is 80. So because they lie in a straight line, they're supplementary, you can subtract it from 180, and you still get 100. Okay, so either way, you can find the external angle measure. All right, now let's look at number 14. We are running out of time, okay? So on 14, what does it say? Solve for what? The interior angle <coughs> measure, X, okay? So this is just like a triangle, meaning that all the angles together are going to add up to some total, okay? So I have X plus 87 plus 92 plus 96. Now with a triangle, this added up to 180, but is that true for a four-sided figure? Would all of these angle measures add up to 180? No. So if you do not know what number goes here, you cannot solve the equation. Here's the good news. The total angle measures for a four-sided figure are the same every single time. It doesn't matter what the individual measures are. What is the sum of the angle measures of a four-sided figure? Does anybody know? It's 360. And it's 360 every single <coughs> time. All right, let's talk about, and now you should be able to solve. Let's talk about number 15. How many sides does that figure have on number 15? Six. It has six sides. So y plus 88 plus 145 plus 110, I'm going to run out of room, plus 91 plus 150 equals... Is it going to equal 180, all of those together? No. So I need to know the sum of a six-sided figure, all of the angle measures added up together, what is the sum? Does anybody know? Okay. N minus 2, so the number of sides of the figure, 6 minus 2 is 4. 4 times 180 is 720 degrees. You have to know the sum. Now, on your midterm, I could give you a five-sided, a six-sided, a seven-sided. If you don't know the sum, which is why you have those terms and definitions on the back, if you don't know the sum, you're not going to be able to solve these, okay? We've set up our equations for 14 and 15. You should be able to solve now. Remember, 1 through 15 is due when? Numbers 1 through 15, which is basically the first two pages. It's due tomorrow. We'll pick up here tomorrow and um, continue on with part two.